This is a recap of the class in which we painted faces and also uh, extracted additional detail from images for use on the head and face area. For this example, uh, I'm going to be using a model I'm in the uh, process of currently building. Uh, she's nowhere near complete, um, but that's going to allow me to use her as a demonstration piece for this process. Uh, I've begun putting clothing on her. <clears throat> Excuse me. The uh, the clothing is by no means done. Um, she's going to be wearing uh, some form of plate mail that is going to cover her from this neck guard uh, down to the bottom of her, uh, top of her boots, rather. Um, and so I've just started going in and putting in a lot of the, uh, the armor pieces that are supposed to be on this particular costume and roughing in some of the detail. Now, one of the things that um, has happened here is that my initial base sculpt <clears throat> the sub tool that I have right here, um, this has just the anatomy on it, and uh, I'm pleased with the anatomy. Um, however, what I want to be doing is I actually want to be going in and adding an additional level of detail to her um, to her face. Um, if you look at the polygroups or the uh, the polygon count here or the vert count, and my subdivision levels, I'm currently 1.4 um, with four subdivision levels and. Well, I can go and subdivide this further, um, I probably don't exactly want to do that um, because it's going to add detail to other parts of her body that uh, are going to eventually get deleted. Her head and face, however, um, is an area that is going to be exposed and is going to be visible throughout um, the entire process of making this character. And so what I need to do um, is I need to split her head off and make an additional subtool from just her head. Now to do this, I want to find the piece that is going to cover where that seam is going to be or where that split is going to be. In this case, um, it's the collar here, the neck guard that she wears. Um, and so somewhere inside this neck guard, I'm going to cut her head off. Now a couple of things um, that I want to go through here and do. Um, her head, you can see there's some eyebrows and some um, uh, little eyelash type things here that I've gone and painted on. Uh, that actually is a paint job that I've done, and uh, I've done so uh, just to help me visualize the character a little bit better. You can see she looks a little uh, a little different without them. Um, and so I'm just going to repaint those out uh, because I don't actually need to retain them um, throughout this process. I'm actually going to end up doing a much better paint job on her than that. So step number one um, in this process here, because I do have a sculpt that I am pretty pleased with, um, it is just a, uh, a, a basic sculpt. You can see there's a lot of areas here like where the ear joins into the head and in fact even the uh, um, anti um, helix from the ear is not completely sculpted. Uh, I've just got a, a basic rough in of what she's going to look like. Um, <clears throat> the idea is that I don't want to actually lose any of this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate my subtools so that I have two of them. This is going to allow me to make changes to one while preserving all of the details that exist on the other. If I go to my subtools here, um, you can see the uh, the meshes, uh, the subtools that were created by my Z spheres in my initial process. And so what I would like to do now is go in and obviously uh, the pink group and the purple group here are the only groups I'm going to need. So using control and shift, I'm going to isolate those. Um, now all the other groups are hidden. And in fact, I'm going to go and reduce down my polygon count um, right down to its lowest subdivision level here. This is where we're going to need to be to make edits and changes to this. Okay, with this all the way down, uh, I can see that there still is some overlap here. If we turn on transparency, uh, we can see that there is still some topology here that will not be needed. Now, usually what I use as a frame of reference is trying to make sure that I can't see where I'm going to be splitting this up down the neck hole or anything like that. So it looks like I could probably get away with getting down to this polygon here. So holding control and shift, I'm going to change my select rectangle and go over to the select rec, uh, lasso. This is going to allow me to hold control and shift and click on an edge and it'll edge loop that selection all the way around. This is going to allow me to continue to hide the additional polygons that aren't needed. This is all that I'm going to retain for her head. Now it is really important that we get rid of 
absolutely everything we aren't going to need. And in all actuality, it would probably make a lot more sense here to actually even hide a little further up our neck um, so that when we subdivide, we can get the most subdivisions out of this as possible without getting millions of polygons kind of under this collar. I'm going to go like this, though. I'm only at 4,800 here at the lowest, and so um, this should subdivide quite nicely. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into Modify Topology, and I'm going to click Delete Hidden. Now, in order for this to happen, you must be on your lowest subdivision level. So if you look up here, you'll see that it's currently updating the subdivision geometry, meaning it's going through each of those subdivisions, and it'll then remove everything that's gone. So now, you'll see if I try to reverse what's hidden here using Control and Shift, uh, there's nothing. Everything is visible. <coughs> Excuse me. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, I want to go check on the quality of my mesh now that I've gone and removed this, as sometimes this process can leave artifacting behind, and usually the artifacts occur in the smallest, tiniest of places. And if I look at this up close, it doesn't actually look to be that bad. Now, we might have noticed a little bit more uh, had I left the paint job on the eyebrows and the eyelashes, but uh, I was going to be removing them regardless. Okay. So now, at my highest subdivision level, level 4, I'm only at 300,000 points, which means I can actually subdivide this two or three more times. There's 4 million. We'll try working at this level. Now, a, a good rule of thumb when working like this is don't really go any higher than you need to. Um, you know, you're going to end up just causing too much of a, uh, a drain on your system, and, and ZBrush will just perform, um, you know, a lot less than you'd like it to. Um, and so the idea here is to um, try and get as much performance out of the system as you can um, while still getting the amount of detail you want. So I'm, I'm going to leave it at 4 million. I can go higher if I want to, but I'll try doing some of the detail work at this level and then uh, and then coming back to it. Um, now what I'm going to do right away is rename this mesh uh, so that there's no mistaking it with the other one. Uh, I can even go into the other one uh, that exists here. And again, I still have those same two polygroups. And I can always go in and hide them from the original mesh. Um, since combined, they will give me kind of the entirety of the character. Um, but remember, too, that there is going to be a lot of clothing on top of this character. Um, and the rest of her body, too, will be gone. All right. So uh, what I want to do now is uh, go through the process of adding a, uh, a secondary level of detail here. So I've done a fairly decent sculpt on this mesh. Um, you know, she's got uh, um, a fair amount of details. There's not all of the details here that I'd like to have, but uh, it was a, a pretty good beginning sculpt and, and uh, you know, laying out where all the anatomy goes and how everything is kind of uh, related here has worked out rather well. Um, but there is another level of detail here to be added to this. Now, a lot of artists have begun using, um, a website used, uh, called texturing.xyz, and this is it here. Now, this website provides, um, images that you can purchase, and they are a cross-polarized photo, um, meaning that there is no reflectivity in the image. So when you look at these images up close, it's it's a little creepy. The, uh, the people look like they're dead. Um, but what you're getting is there's no reflections in any of the skin. So that cross polarization that they're doing, they're using one polarity on the light and one polarity on the lens and they reverse each other. And uh, you, what you end up getting is this kind of detail here where you can see um, essentially the, um, the true nature, the true color of the person's skin uh, without it getting any uh, hot spots or reflections. In fact, uh, when you see images of women uh, like this woman here, for, uh, for instance, uh, you can see a little bit of makeup here on her face. Um, and so she's got, it looks like a little bit of cover up here in her forehead. Um, that ends up showing up a lot more in these, uh, in these images. Um, and so if you go into the surfaces section here under human, you'll see that another thing that they offer um, and there, there's a few pages of these, um, are these cross polarized images of, um, various areas of the human body. These are, um, essentially detail maps or height maps, uh, that can be used. So here's a woman's face, 
um, and you can see the, the quality of this image is fantastic. Even though there is a uh, there's a watermark on here, if you can't see that, it's some diagonal lines to prevent you from just using the image here. Um, but what you get with these things is an incredible level of detail on these things um, that uh, allows you to kind of use this in conjunction with ZBrush um, to get all of this detail out. Now, there's a catch uh, with this, and that's that these images are a little pricey. Um, this particular image set is um, $40, and uh, that is going to give you essentially just this. This is the entirety of the image here. Um, just this woman's face from the front, uh, kind of already unwrapped for you in a little, uh, a little bit. Um, with uh, three different maps here, the tertiary, the secondary, and the micro detail. Uh, now these things are 20,000 pixels. They are incredibly large. Um, but using this just for personal use, this is 40 bucks. And if you wanted to use this in a commercial project, uh, you're actually looking at 120. So the, the cost of these things does get um, a, little, uh, a little absurd come the end of it. And so um, it's not something that's that's you know going to be uh, very usable by students. It's not something that uh, you know uh, people on a limited budget are going to be able to put together. Um, I do wanted to show you kind of what this is like though, and this is kind of what the norm is and what people are using nowadays. Now I'm going to show you an alternative to doing this that isn't as much money um, or might be free depending on uh, your ability to Google some of these images. Um, the quality is not going to be anywhere near the quality that you get from using these images from texturing xyz um you know there's a reason that these images cost what they do and it's because the uh the end result that you get the, from these things is phenomenal um but we're going to take a uh, an alternate route here we're going to try and go a uh, a cheap route using the student budget to see if we can't uh, get something uh, on par. Now there is another website, this is it here, um, which is Human Photo Reference. This is 3D.sk. Um, and this is a website that specializes in um, images of all kinds of things for character development. Um, you get different types of people, different builds, different uh, ethnic backgrounds, and uh, different uh, places on the human body all displayed for you. So you can, um, you know, get much better reference from this. And uh, there are uh, a tremendous amount of character artists that use this in their everyday life. Um, and so what we could do here now, if, if I go back and look at my image, um, this is obviously going to be uh, a character of Asian descent, uh, obviously somebody who is female. And so I would need those two things. And so uh, if you had a subscription, and this is a uh, subscription website, um, if you had a subscription here, uh, you could go look for uh, age and let's do 21 to 31 gender this is a woman race we're going to look for asian body parts i would like the face um and so on you would kind of go through all these things and then do a search uh and what the website will return to you is from their database uh all of the images that match uh what was shown and so uh you'll notice here actually uh there's a street reference one here uh, that may actually contain uh, an Asian woman as well. You can see there's an Asian fella here on the on the front. Um, but you can see like a whole bunch of these different women have shown up, all in the right age, all with the right ethnic background, um, and all showing me uh, their faces. Um, now, I don't actually need to go through... I'm not familiar with Sophia. Um, but anyway, you can go see these are uh, fairly high quality images um, that you can go and uh, check out. Uh, this uh, website is a uh, subscription-based website as well. Um, most studios that I know of have uh, a subscription to this website just because of how valuable it is. Um, and I've gone and uh, downloaded some of the uh, some of the references that uh, I've used most frequently from this website. Um, since I no longer have a subscription, I had one while I was at a studio, but uh, I no longer do. And so I've got to rely on my very small collection in order to get me uh, get me through this. Um, now, what I'm going to be doing here is we're going to be starting off in, uh, in Photoshop. And we're going to try and reproduce, essentially, one of those same types of images. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go open up in, uh, in Photoshop here one of the images of one of the women uh, who matches um, 
the uh, ethnic background and the um, age, whatnot, of the, the character that I'm currently working on and, uh, and see if we can't do that. Now, I've pre-chosen an image here uh, that I'll be using for this. And this is uh, from the 3D.SK website. Um, this is Nella. Um, you can see she's of Asian descent. And uh, this is a fairly uh, straight on image of this, uh, this lady. And so this will work fairly well. Uh, you can see, unlike the cross polarized images, we are getting uh, some reflectivity here in the skin. Okay, so there are some some places where the uh, the shine of the skin is showing through, which um, is going to uh, going to actually hurt this process a little bit. Um, however, uh, we'll see what we can do here with this uh, if we can't get uh, something that's going to be usable. Now, I need uh, I'm going to use a minimum of two images here, um, only to keep this video uh, on the short side of things. Um, however you uh, probably want to use a, a lot more images in the process of doing this, if you can. Okay, uh, back in here. Sorry about that. Um, that was my kid uh, looking to play some video games. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to actually look here for a, uh, uh, a second image. And I'm going to try and do the same Photoshop process here on two images. Um, the other image that I'd like um, for this young lady uh, is going to be this one, uh, which is a side image. And this is just going to be able to get some of the additional facial details here up to the ear. I don't actually need the ear itself, but... Uh, these two images, if I were to actually scale them down the right uh, right way here, you could see that we could actually kind of put these together and get an unwrapped looking face. Okay, now the process I'm going to do, this is kind of just an, an ability here to fake that um, cross polarization. So what I want to do is I'm going to go into filter. Actually, let's duplicate the layer first, uh, just so that we have the original uh, still to play with. So I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to use other and I'm going to use high pass. Um, and then I just need to set this here until what I'm seeing essentially is just the the pores and the wrinkles. Now, uh, the higher in resolution or the higher in pixel radius here you go, uh, you'll see the more that original image shows through. Uh, and the lower you go, the more we end up just getting that flat gray look. Um, and so the idea here is kind of pull this up. You can see that um, at about two and a half, we get uh, eyebrows showing through. I can see her eye here clearly, but a lot of the pore area is not quite visible. Uh, and so I think I'm going to go somewhere around four pixels and I'm going to hit OK. And then what I'm going to do is uh, desaturate this as well, just to make sure it is perfectly uh, grayscale. Now, this is a, uh, a trick I've used in uh, photography uh, in the past. Um, which gives me the ability to, if I go and show you the original image here, um, set this layer to be an overlay. And what this will do is it kind of makes the image look a little higher resolution. Um, you can see that it almost looks like there's a soft focus filter here um, on, the, uh, on the image by itself. And then when you put this overlay on, you start getting a little bit more crispness in those details. Um, and so I've kind of used this in, in uh, photography in the past and um, post-processing images and photos that I've taken in order to uh, try and make them look a little higher res or focus in on details in a particular area. Um, we don't actually want to do that, though. So what I'm going to do with this is actually just save this out. Um, and for the time being, we'll just throw this on my desktop here. Um, in fact, I'll just use that name. Now, the reason I use my desktop when I'm doing this is that um, this image comes from a collection of images and I don't want to overwrite anything from that collection. Um, and so I'd like to, um, just cancel that. Um, I'd like to make sure 
that I do go and uh, retain my original images here. I don't want to uh, overwrite them. Um, and placing them on the, my desktop, uh, just because of the nature of how I work, I'm always removing things from my desktop. So it's going to allow me to uh, make these images temporarily and then go and overwrite them again once I'm done. Okay, now that I've got that done about those images here, what I'm going to do is I'm back in the World of ZBrush. I'm going to go to Texture and I'm going to go to Import. And we'll go grab from the desktop. Uh, let's start with the front image. Okay, so there, that is there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select it, and I know it's really hard to see, um, but the, the software can uh, see a lot more of the minute changes in the gray than we can. So I'm going to go and add this to Spotlight. So what this is going to do is it's going to create this overlay here, this image um, that's going to, you know, we can grab it and move it wherever we want on our canvas. Uh, I'm just going to place it somewhere like this, kind of in the middle. Um, and then we get this wheel here where we can go and play around with the properties of this image here. And I'm currently interested in the opacity. Um, and I'm just going to increase the opacity just a little bit. Um, I want to make sure I can see the properties or the, the areas of the, uh, the character here. Uh, I'm going to scale it up to now this scaling is not actually scaling the image. So we're not, um, increasing the pixels um, the way you would in Photoshop if you were to transform this. It's keeping the uh, the pixels at one to one. And so I, I don't want to go larger than they're supposed to be, but um, something a little like this is going to work. Now you can see the eye here in grayscale. Um, that's kind of what I'm trying to pay attention to. I'm looking for the eye and the top of her hairline. Uh, I'm going to concentrate purely on the forehead for now. And so I want to kind of get those in view. And then what I'd like to do is I'd like to go in and uh, I'm going to hit Z on my keyboard. Uh, and once that's done, I'm now in control of my 3D model again. And so this is kind of the way that Spotlight works. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and line up my model with the, uh, the image here. Now, they're not going to be exact. Um, I didn't use this uh, woman as reference when I sculpted. And uh, so she's not going to be anywhere near exactly the same as the, uh, the other. And uh, <clears throat> all I really want to do here is uh, transfer this image onto my model. So you can see I've kind of lined up the eyes here. Um, the brow is there as well. I'm, I'm not too concerned about the brow. And in fact, I'll probably go in and paint that out in a moment. Um, but you can see all the way up to the hairline and uh, over towards the ear here uh, and down the nose a little bit. Now this woman's got her head tilted back a little bit further. So I'm going to have to go and reposition mine a little bit. In fact, I could probably even go and tilt mine back as well um, just to ensure that I get the same kind of uh, axis on this. Okay, so something like that. You can see that eye still lines up. This is just going to make sure it's a little bit more accurate. Now, here's where the uh, here's where the cool part comes in. So what we're going to do, I've got my standard brush currently selected. And what I want to do with the standard brush is I want to turn off the Z-Add, so I'm not currently sculpting on my model. I'm going to turn on RGB so that I'm going to be painting on my model. And uh, what this is going to do, I've got symmetry turned on here, so you'll actually see this on the, uh, the side here where we can't see the reference image. Um, but what this is going to do, if I go and paint on our brow, you'll see that this is transferring that color information from the image onto my model. It's kind of just projecting it right down. Now, the first stroke is usually when I can determine whether or not that polygon limit that I've used is going to work uh, based on how accurate the eyebrows will look um, and how, how similar they look. And I can see that there is a little bit of loss. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hit undo and I'm going to subdivide it one more time. I use control D to do this. It's brought it up to 20 million polys. And now if I go and sculpt on here, we should see a little bit more uh, accuracy in terms of what that... Uh, image is producing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and paint, a, you know, a good chunk of this woman's face directly onto my model. Um, there are a ton of uh, features here. We're not actually going to want uh, eyelashes and eyebrows, you know, none of that stuff is going to be of any use to us. Um, but the, uh, the majority of this stuff actually is going to be pretty useful. And so I'll just go and mat that down, something like that. If I hit Shift Z now, um, I can, <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
excuse me. Um, I can uh, I can actually go and hide uh, the image by hitting Shift Z. And so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hit Z to bring back up the properties for the plane. And I'm going to drag it up until her eye is now at the top of the image. Um, I'll bring my model up as well and I'll dock her eye there. Now, what I'm interested in here is the nose. And so I'll kind of get the nose to line up a little bit. And then we'll go in and continue out some of the, uh, the cheek painting here. And we'll go across the bottom of the nose. I know this isn't going to line up perfectly, but uh, I'll kind of get a, uh, a little bit more painted than I actually want. And then we'll try and do her mouth here as well. So a little bit of a quick paint job on the mouth and down into her chin. All right, something like that. So it's starting to look like a uh, clay beauty mask or something of that nature. But if we look up close at this, um, you can actually see a lot of that poor information has been captured from this sculpt. Now, um, also remember that I am doing this symmetrically. This model happens to be symmetrical. Uh, I don't normally work 100% symmetrical. Usually I break things up. Um, but this model wasn't actually yet at the point where I'd gotten the likeness down to the point that I was pleased with it. Um, and so because of that, she's still actually completely symmetrical which is why the paint job is going on as symmetrical as it is. And so normally what I would end up doing is going in and breaking up some of that symmetry. Now I am still going to break up some of that symmetry for this example, but um, what I'm going to do instead is once I've actually captured the information from this gray into the, uh, into the model, uh, I'll then go and break up the symmetry kind of afterwards. So let's go use the second image. Now I'm going to go and import it. Uh, that was this one. Uh, and I'll go and select that one and we'll add that one to the spotlight. And now you can see both images are here. Here's the original one and then here's the second one. And so same deal here. I'm just going to turn up the opacity and scale this up a little bit until I can see kind of what I'm dealing with. And then I do need to pull that opacity back just a little bit because uh, I'm going to need to see my own model. Okay, so now I'll just make my own model fit the... Um, the uh, reference image here so i'm just trying to scale her up i'm looking for the corner of the eye and the ears as well as the uh, the brow area here because i want the uh the resolution of this stuff to be right cool so with that i can go in and kind of just finish up and i want to make sure i'm getting a little bit of overlap in my paint job here um, but what this is going to do is it's going to continue in that paint job and i know there's a ton of hair here showing up uh that's all right and so something like that. And then we'll turn that off. And we can see now that that's kind of continued that paint job all the way across. Now, we didn't get all the way down to her chin or jaw, um, nor did we get uh, her ear or into any of her head. That's, that's really fine. I don't really care about that. Um, what I want to do is uh, I do want to get rid of some of this, uh, this base color that's here. Uh, now, what I probably should have done in the, uh, the beginning is just gone and based the entire head in um, with that gray color. Um, but that would have made it a little harder to see where I had successfully painted some of this stuff and where I hadn't. And so I'll go in now and uh, just finish up the rest of the head with this gray color. Okay, so something like this. Uh, turn that off and turn the neck guard off here. Um, I'll bring my draw size a little bit larger. I want to make sure I'm not. Mm, what's happened? Something appears to have happened. Okay. ZBrush. ZBrush appears to have hung. There we go. <coughs> I'm not sure what happened there, but the, uh, the software just took a break for a moment. It might have been auto backing or something of that nature. So anyway, I'm just going to go and base in the rest of her head here. I want to make sure I don't get too much overlap there. I do want to get rid of all the uh, that base color that's there. But I don't really necessarily want to fill in the stuff that I just painted. Um, I probably don't really need to worry about her eyes. Uh, I'm just going to paint out some of the hard details that arose here from the nostrils. Uh, I do want to make sure that the eye is... Uh, 
going at least inside the socket here. So I will just give that a little bit of this gray value. That's probably fine like that. Okay, so let's look at now how to transfer this uh, onto the model. So we've got this down as a paint job. And while it does look like the entire thing is gray, uh, there are minute variances in that gray value. So here's what we're going to do. Right now, this is all poly painted. And so I'm going to go masking. And let's create a mask from the color intensity. And then what this is going to do is we're going to use that variance in gray colors to mask my model out. So if we were to now go and turn off the poly paint, turn that off. Now what you're looking at is just the mask. Okay, so what it's done is it's copied that mask into, uh, or the poly painting into a mask. So now we've got these slight variances in the mask. And what we can do with that is if we go to deformation down here, and we're going to go to the inflate tab and I'll just click here. Let's try a value of five. And so we're going to inflate the model five and you can see what's happened here, um, which is no bueno. Um, she ended up with um, some horrific skin disease because the vertices have moved out uh, five units, which in this case has ended up being way too much. You can see uh, other artifacts here occurring as well. So I'm just going to hit undo. And then let's bring that inflate up a much smaller number. Let's try 0.5. Now this one might be uh, overkill as well, as you'll notice. When we zoom in, um, it is very, very strong, but you can see the effect we're getting um, is we're now starting to get a lot of the pores from the, uh, the mask start to appear on her skin. So uh, 0.5 was too much. Let's try 0.05. Let's reduce it down in a factor of 10 again. And now we're starting to get something. Now, uh, what you really want to do when you're doing this is go back in your masking and you're going to want to turn that view mask off. Now, the reason for this is that um, you're seeing that variance in color in the mask and we don't want to be seeing that. I'm going to turn off the poly paint as well so that we're just looking at the geometry itself. Now, you can see this is giving us really subtle um, pores and wrinkles and such in um, some of the areas where it most needs it. If you look at her lips here, you can see it started gathering some of that detail from the lips in the image. Uh, it's not a tremendous amount. Um, we look around the eyes here. We're, st we're starting to get some really nice stuff. You can see the hairs have come in. That's where the, uh, the greatest variance in um, that black and white color was. So not too bad. Uh, another thing that you can do with this, if you are getting a very uneven distribution here, I've gone and switched over to my inflate brush. And this is going to behave very similar to the uh, <clears throat> the deformation tool. And so what I can do here, that mask is still currently on. If we go to the masking here, uh, you'll see that even though the view mask is turned off, uh, the mask is still present. And so what I can do is I can really delicately I've only got my intensity set to one here, but what this is going to let me do is it's going to let me just really pull a little bit more of that detail out. Um, and so it allows you to kind of um, manually go in and and increase some of this value here. So it's, I'm going to go up a little bit further in my intensity up to three. And I just want to get this to be kind of even here. It was really the lips that I wanted to get a little bit more out of. Um, so something like that. Okay. So I'm pleased with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the mask before I forget, um, because the mask is actually going to um, prohibit me from doing anything else with this, because it is masked. And uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to go in and base coat her um, and, uh, and start getting a, a paint job going. Um, now, the, the skin color that was there before was something that I just, you know, picked out of thin air. It wasn't uh, meant to be uh, the proper skin tone for this particular character. Um, in fact, if I go and open up in here um, that PSD that I had, and we just remove that top layer that had the overlay um, this is actually a pretty good palette for picking skin tone 
um, since this woman is of the um, same ethnic background as the model that I'm making. And uh, you can see we've got a ton of different variances in the coloring of her skin based off uh, the different positions in this image. She's even got, you can see some really nice uh, freckles up close that we can go and mimic as well. So what I'll do is I'm just going to resave this image now that I've hidden that layer. And then I'll just go in here and we'll just re-import that image again from the desktop. And I'll now go and add that one to the spotlight. Now we could uh, we could paint this um, on the model uh, using the same technique with the standard brush. Um, and, uh, you know, actually going in, let me turn this off and show you how that would work here. I'll just do it in the back of her head. Um, so you can see we can, we can actually go in and like use that same technique to paint these colors on. Um, but I'm not, uh, I'm not interested in doing that. I want to actually, uh, use it more as a, um, a means of, uh, of color picking here. Uh, and so I'm going to bring it back and, uh, and we'll start doing some color picking. Now the way color picking works, um, when using an image like this, I am going to turn that opacity up all the way now so that we are getting true values here uh, and I'll scale this up and bring it back over here. So the way color picking works, uh, you have your foreground and your background color over here. And if you click and drag onto your image, you can see that wherever I drag this, it's updating that color right here with whatever color it happens to be over. Now, this is only occurring because the spotlight wheel is still there. And if the spotlight wheel were gone, you can see this is actually eyedroppering directly through that image onto the background. And so if you're get, not getting the colors show up, make sure the spotlight wheel is visible. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to kind of grab an average skin tone, something like that, and then we'll, uh, we'll go and hide this. Um, I'm on my standard brush. I have RGB turned on and Ziad turned off, and I'm just going to say color, fill object, and that's going to base coat her in that color. Now we can see how fine that poor detail is now that we're not on gray. Um, it is very, very subtle, um, which is good though, because, you know, some of this stuff we're going to have to paint out the hair and whatnot. Um, and there's, you know, there's places where it wasn't quite strong enough that we're going to want to paint it back on. Um, what I'm going to do first though, is I'm, I really want to go in and uh, give her a fairly decent base color here. So I'm going to go in and eye drop her a little bit more of this uh, brownish color that's around her eyes. Um, I'm going to bring my opacity down here, 15% or so. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to go kind of around her eye tissue a little bit with that. Um, like so. Uh, I'm going to go around sort of, sort of the crevice areas of her skin here a little bit with this. Um, so something a little bit like that. I'll bring this kind of under the nose and we could probably even do inside the, the nostrils with this color like so, like that, um, go a little bit more into the central area of the eye here, okay, and paint that in, like that, um, it's not too bad, I hit a little bit of that nasal labial fold in some of the crease area here on the side of the mouth, maybe even across the chin a little bit. Now, uh, I do want to watch out that she doesn't start looking like a zombie here. Um, she's starting to look a little pale. Let's see if we can grab uh, somewhere in here. Yeah, that's not too bad. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to naturally choose um, a purple tone here. I'm going to reduce my opacity down quite low. And I'm just going to really delicately hit under the eyes. Get a little bit of blood collection in this area here as it hangs down about lower than the eyelid. Um, yeah, that's not too bad. Let's bring her back again and let's go eye drop her something a little pinkish here from the uh, from the lips. And so I guess something in that range. And then we'll zoom in and we'll kind of hit the lips in this color. Now you do want to make sure you're not going in. And I'll, I'll do a, uh, a bad version of this here. You don't want to go in and give it a hard line like that. Um, that's not the way lip tissue works. Um, you know, it's a very subtle gradient where it just kind of blends back into the tone of your skin. 
And so uh, I, I want to be very, very subtle in the way that I paint this. Okay, something like that. And then I'm going to go and grab some of the uh, the darker red that's in here, that's in kind of the crease of the lips. And uh, I'm going to go and hit that kind of in the little area between. I'm going to turn down my opacity here. That was really strong. There we go. And I'll just kind of blend that out a little bit. Same deal here. Just hit the part of her lips here where they touch. And then I'm just really trying to blend that out. Now, if you hold shift to go into your smooth brush, one of the other really cool things that you can do here is you can turn, while holding shift, you can turn add off. And what shift does now is shift will actually only smooth the RGB or your colors. So holding shift now is actually just going to blend out um, some of those colors together and you'll get a little bit more of an even um, gradient across the images. Uh, okay, I'm going to go grab something a little bit more red in color now, and I'm going to start hitting the uh, some of the thinner areas of tissue. Uh, so these are areas kind of like the nose, um, where you're going to end up with a little bit of a uh, pinker tone. Okay, something like that. Again, I'm still working symmetrically. I'm going to end up breaking this up in a moment. Um, and her ears too, they could really benefit from a increase in tone here a little bit extra blood flow there something like that um, i might even heat our cheeks a little bit too just to give her a little bit more um, coloring so again she doesn't look so dead but just a little bit of uh of coloration here so it looks like her cheeks are a little flush um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to make her look like she's blushing or wearing, you know, any kind of makeup, uh, but just the natural kind of, uh, blood circulation you get in the area is, uh, really all I'm looking for. And then, uh, yeah, that's starting to look pretty decent. Um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to go and start breaking up some of the, uh, some of the tissues here in the chin or in the, uh, in the face. Um. I'm pretty pleased with this overall, but, you know, it's still just an incredibly even paint job. And in fact, if we go look at this um, on a different material, like the flat material, and I'm just going to go and apply this so you can see it. Um, this is really what our paint job looks like at the moment. And you can see there's really there's nothing there. Um, you know, a tremendous amount of the detailing here is coming from the sculpt. Which is fine, uh, you know, it's not a, a terrible thing, but I, I do want to go in and kind of uh, help this along a little bit further. And so there's a few things that we can do here that will uh, that will help this out. Well, one of the things that I like to do is to uh, turn on the character's eyeballs, um, just so I'm not incredibly creeped out by this um, eyeless face here. Um, <clears throat> this is going to help me. Now, I am missing the sclera, the little... Uh, corner of the eye here, the tear ducty area that I'm going to have to add in, um, but the uh, the eye itself is is painted already. It's just a very quick paint job, um, as you know the the face was very quickly painted to begin with. Um, but I, okay, so let's go in and start adding a little bit more variety. So this is really easily demonstrated if we look at that image uh, again that we're using as reference. This woman's face. Um, if you look at her skin up close, you can see a ton of variation in coloring, you know, little pink bits and brown bits and lighter bits and bluer bits. And, you know, there's kind of yellower bits. It's, it's stuff all over the place in different ranges. Um, you know, she's got little moles and imperfections. She's got a little scar in the corner of her eye. Like these are all the things that make human beings look real. Um, you know, this, this history of, your skin being used and, and having been lived in. Now, you do want to be very careful uh, with female characters doing this because um, it's really easy to go way too far on a female character. However, um, we still want to put some of that realism in. So, uh, first thing that I'm going to do is hold shift and I'm going to turn off the RGB and turn back on the add. Uh, and I'm going to do this to blend out the um the eyebrows here uh just to make sure 
that uh, they don't show up. And uh, the same through with, she had a little bit of hair on the temples here that we're going to need to smooth out as well. Okay, so any of these little details that shouldn't be present in the sculpt, we're just going to smooth them out. Okay, that looks good there. She's got a little bit of eyelash detail going on here too, but uh, I'm not entirely concerned about that. I've still got to put an epicanthic fold on this face. Um, and so I'm going to leave the eyes for now, but the, you would want to do that as well. Okay, we'll turn off the uh, the material here. So I'm on the standard brush and I'm going to switch over to the spray. Uh, now what this is going to do, this stroke is going to give you random um, ends of your brush at various rotations and scales. Um, so if you look at what this does, if I want Z-Add here at the back, um, make my brush a little bit smaller here, it's going to just kind of randomize this spatter. Now, if we want to take this a bit further, we can go in and use the alpha number seven, and this will now randomize that spatter. So you can see, you get this crazy little bump style looking here. So I'm going to switch this to a um, subtractive mode. And now, if I make my brush the right size, we can get this to start looking like pores. So something like that. Now, the part of the reason I'm using the back of the head here as a test area is that it's eventually going to get covered with hair. And so the idea now is to go in, and I've still got symmetry turned on, so I'm going to start by the ears. And I'm just going to go in and very delicately start going over her skin. Now, I want to avoid most of the, the really good detail we've gotten from the image. Um, but I want to kind of use this to continue that detailing down into the places where the image did not. And so you can see down into the chin here and across her jaw. And I'm really just letting the, uh, the stylus go very delicately over the top of the surface of the tablet. I'm not pressing hard in any way. Okay, so down there, a little bit something like that. Under the chin a little bit further. I'm going to go up into her brow area here. Now I've got the dynamic brush turned on, so as I zoom in and out, this is actually controlling the scale of my brush as well. And so get these areas a little bit here. Her nose too, I had smoothed out. Now once I start getting to the center area, I'm going to turn off symmetry so that I can run my brush across the the center line and kind of remove some of that Rorschach, that tiling that you're seeing from the fact that this thing was completely symmetrical. And so I'll just kind of fill in where the brow was here. And this one as well. Something of that nature. I can zoom out a little bit. That's good. That's really starting to give me a little bit of the impression here of skin. Uh, I'm going to continue this down her neck. I should probably do this with symmetry turned on as it'll be a lot faster to base in that area. Now the neck, you can actually hold alt and um, do this with an additive brush um, as your neck often gets little tiny bumps on it. Um, you know, similar to what you see with people when they get um, goosebumps or whatnot. And so if I go in and just kind of base that in a little bit like that, it'll give me a good starting point anyway. All right, let's go and uh, vary up some of the tones in her skin as well. So I'm going to turn off the ad and we're going to go back to RGB. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and grab um, a skin color here. <clears throat> I'm going a little bit darker than what's actually on her skin. We're going to turn this intensity way down too. And what I want to do here is just kind of once over a little bit. And I'll show you this again on the back of the head here where there's not anything going on. And what this is doing is it's just painting in little tiny dots of varying sizes and intensities on her skin. So this is kind of breaking up that skin tone now so that it's not a perfect flat color, but we're starting to get little bits of variances in the skin. Now, when your brush is really small, you gotta be careful that you do an even coating of this. And uh, a lot of times when I'm doing this, I'll actually 
switch my uh, my color several times just to ensure that I'm getting you know these even um, coats but that it's not just one brown color over the entirety of the model you know if I go an eyedropper or something like this and put that kind of back here a little bit and bleed that out a little bit further you know I can go and grab the color off her nose and you know continue that down into the bottom area of the nose here um, go and grab a richer brown and do a little bit more down on her chin now you want to be very careful with women when you do this that you don't just make it look like they've got a five o'clock shadow um, but you know really I'm only at six percent opacity here and I really want to kind of soften this up that might be even too dark and I'm just gonna kind of give this a couple of passes same thing with the ears here too I didn't go and add any of that uh, skin pore detail in the ears but you get the idea you would want to do that there too um, now what I can do is I can actually make these a little bit bigger and start increasing their value here once we start hitting the areas where she's going to have hair <clears throat> you can see this now on this part of her head here let's even bring the intensity up a little bit uh, what this is going to do is it's going to start darkening her head there um, and I don't want this to look like uh, stubble, like she shaves her head. But the uh, the idea is to start darkening a little bit where you would get some of this amulet occlusion shadowing from her hair in these areas. And so just a little bit of a base coat like that, I think. And again, you know, you can bring that right over the top of her head. <clears throat> we can go and add some imperfections in her skin here too. So let's turn this off. So I've just gone back to the default stroke brush and an alpha that's off. And uh, watch this. We're going to turn the intensity up and the uh, the Z add up as well. I'm going to kill the symmetry here. And uh, what I can do now, watch this. If I go and do a little tiny area like this, um, this is going to raise that skin up. And if I increase the color, uh, let's. I'm going to undo both of those. I didn't have the right color selected. I'm still using a... Uh, very simplified skin tone here but if I go and do something kind of in the brown and now I can bring the intensity down this is going to give us these tiny little moles and so you know you can play with how far they're raised up from the skin and how dark they are but this is going to add a very certain level of realism to this where you know skin is not even um, in color and in texture and what have you and so I generally do this up close too to ensure that I'm not you know making you know uh, the Big Dipper or something on her face and I'm not accidentally putting any kind of pattern uh, anywhere in how I'm doing this but you get the idea just kind of here and there adding these little tiny um, you know imperfections in the skin not enough to make her look like, you know, a haggard old witch, but, you know, it's enough that she is uh, definitely starting to um, look like she's got real human being skin. Now, uh, the other thing that I want to do is uh, to give her some freckles. Um, I generally do this as kind of a calling card. All of my characters have had freckles. Um... I just vary their intensity and color in order to make sure that not all my characters look the same, but it's just something I've always kind of done with my characters. And so uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to go into the drag rectangle. Now, the way that this stroke works, if we use an alpha that's like this arrow here, when I click and drag, it'll drag that arrow on her skin, little airbender. Um, and so what I want to do, I don't want the freckles to be raised, so I'm going to turn that off. And I can now play with the intensity, so you can see that I can start getting this thing to drag on. And uh, I'm going to turn my focal shift down, like that, so I don't get them to fade out. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go use an alpha here that I've created. Um, and this alpha, I'll kind of show you what this looks like um, in Photoshop here. So this is an alpha that um, I created a little ways back <clears throat> that I call Freckles. And it is just this very 
uh, random spattering of dots in various sizes and you can see that some of the dots have merged together and some of them are kind of oblong in shape um, and this brush I use this on almost all my models here so if I go and um, bring this in I don't need to save this I've already built this um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import this okay and um, what we're interested in here there it is there um, is just dragging this on the model and giving us a collection of freckles now the nice thing about this is that we can set the intensity so that was 37 here's 9 so you can see 9 is giving us a really nice it look kind of like liver spots on an old person back here but once we bring this around to this lady's nose i'll put a few on her nose here and i'll kind of walk this around and the nice thing about this is that as i drag in different directions it's actually spinning that alpha and so i can go and i'll do some at three here to kind of bleed it out a little bit so the freckles don't just end arbitrarily um but you can see that that's giving her you know just a little bit of variation in her skin tone um, and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit these areas here where um, you know she would be receiving a lot of Sun um, so I'll do like kind of the tops of her cheeks and across her nose and I generally will hit her forehead a little bit too and again you want to make sure that this is crazy subtle you don't want to you don't want to go too far with this because uh, especially in a char character that's meant to be Asian um, you know, the last thing I want is for it to actually start looking like a ginger or something like that. Um, you know, it's supposed to be really, 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 really subtle. And so, something like that. There we go. I'll bleed those out a little bit. I can even bring these back into her cheek a little bit further here. Again, with a subtlety like this at an intensity of three, like this is just giving me this slight kind of... Uh, coloring the other thing that's really nice about this is that uh if you've gone too far with this you know we can just go arbitrarily pick um one of the colors from her skin you know by just dragging that on um and again my intensity is still set to three i can just kind of coat this with that skin color and it'll pull them back right so it kind of gets rid of how brilliant they are uh, and starts pulling them back into that regular skin tone again. And so there you have it. There's kind of the uh, the finished project. Um, you know, I'll, we're going to do hair and such uh, at another time. But um, in terms of painting the face, that is the gist of it. All right. Hope you enjoyed this.